He's a set of questions sent in. What have you got? Yeah, I've got a question from Margaret, and she wants to know how do you propagate a no, a aeonium? Aeonium. <laughs> What's aeonium? This is an aeonium. It's a. I thought he was going to say something else. <laughs> no. It's hey, hey, an aeonium is a sucking. Now this one has has a, 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 a name. It's, it's aeonium Schwarzkopf, which <laughs> translated into the English is blackhead. And Elizabeth Schwarzkopf, the opera singer, thought would never have got on as well if she'd been called Elizabeth Blackhead. Um, but anyway. <laughs> But this is Aeonium Schwarzkopf. This is an Aeonium. The way to propagate it, it, don't be alarmed, this is quite drastic, but it works. Take your secateurs down here and go like that. So basically now, kill it. <laughs> no. <laughs> that will grow again, just like this. And what you can do with all these shoots here, uh, just keep that growing normally in your, your conservatory or on your windowsill. And if you take a little cutting like that, take off the dead leaves underneath it. And when you get a cutting which is just like that, about two inches long, dip it into... Around the edge, you can do two or three in there of a pot of sandy compost. Keep it on your windowsill, pull it back over it if you want. They'll root, you can pot them up, and it will eventually make they, a new well, plant. They'll grow. They'll, they'll, they'll grow again. They'll, 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 these will root. They'll root and grow their own plants, really? and these still have your stock plant. Yeah. It's magic, this. Let them, them pot sing it. Simon. <laughs> Simon, yours. Right. Um, this is a question from Ralph Rawlins. He says, I need your help with the beautiful Hebe that appears to be dying on us. Right. It is about two years old and grows in a pot by the south facing fence. But it's now going brown. It's been a tough winter for hebes. They're natives of where Paul's come back from, New Zealand. Um, and in our very winters like this one, very, very cold and quite a lot of snow and stuff like that, they don't like it. So these are quite good because they've been underground in the garden centre. If they've gone brown and horrible, look down the bottom. If you can see, as you can see here, tiny little green buds growing like that there. You see, they're just coming out here. You can cut back to those this month or next. Cut the brown growth off. That'll be fine, but just give them a good feed. That'll bring them back. The best way with the tender ones is uh, to take cuttings. Short little shoot tip cuttings like that. During the summer, root them and keep them in a greenhouse through the winter. So if it is a bad winter, you've got some replacements and an insurance policy for yeah. it. Lee. Okay. Um, this is from Brenda jo uh, Hobson. I say Brenda Johnson. Um, please, can you tell me how to get rid of ground elder taking over my patch of garden? Oh, ground elder. This is ground elder, and it's a terribly pernicious weed. In fact, if I just knock it out on the edge here, removing my Aeonium Schwarzkopf and <laughs> tapping it out, you'll see what the problem is with ground elder. The problem with ground elder is its roots. They are thick. If I get down in here, you see these things here. Don't be tempted to go and rotivate the ground with ground elder on. It'll chop all this up into little one-inch pieces and they will all grow again. The only way to get rid of this, if you don't mind using weed care, and I'm an organic gardener so I tend not to use it, glyphosate or Roundup sprayed on this when it comes up and keep spraying it two or three times during the season, you will eventually kill it. But it'll also kill anything else it touches as well. So if it's in a border, you've got to take out the cultivated plants, clean them, and then treat the border with that. Alternatively, you can keep hoeing it out or digging it out to get rid of every bit of root. Or you can cover the ground with black polythene and put on top of that, just so it doesn't look quite so nasty, chipped bark and leave it like that for a year and it will eventually kill it out. Anthony. I love the way these boys get two lines. I get an essay. Right. <laughs> this is from Chris Wright. My Fornium Tenax is about 20 years old and grows in the middle of the front lawn. <laughs> yes. Into the bad winter, it is now mostly dead, although there are some green leaves in and around the middle of it. Yeah. If I cut it down to the ground, do you think it will regrow? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> You've never said. <laughs> You've never used words like this, have you? Well, You're right. right. Did I well, say this, it right? It's <laughs> beautiful. Formium tenax is this, another New Zealand, a New Zealand flax. This is a lovely variety, the variety like sundowner, which has got these striped edges. It's a beautiful statuesque plant, that's what it should look like. After a tough winter like the one we just had, it can look like that. So you can cut off all this dead growth, and you will probably find inside it, there's a lump here, for instance. Can you see? This is still alive, and that bit can still grow. Chop all this off, feed it, water it, and it may well come back, but alternatively, Buy a new one. <laughs> and that way, you'll end up with a formium in New Zealand flax that looks just like that. <laughs> Thank you for your questions, and my thanks to Duncan, Simon, Lee, and Anthony, too. <laughs> That's it for today. On Monday, comedian Ruby Wax is here. X Factor and I'm a celeb winner, Stacey Solomon, drops by. The star of the choir, Gareth Malone, talks about his next uplifting project. Phil Vicker is in the AT kitchen, and there's music from American singing sensation Alexis Jordan. Just time to tell you to plant 